Hey, it's Aurelius, hope you're doing well. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can record video podcasts, interviews, and meetings in studio quality. All right, let's get straight into it. The very tool you will need to record your video podcasts and interviews is called Riverside. And as stated on their website, it's your online recording studio. The keyword here is studio, and that's really what separates Riverside to its competitors, such as Zoom. We've all been on Zoom meetings where there may have been some technical issues, either on your end or your guests, especially when when it comes to video quality. Things such as freezing, skipping frames, pixelation, those are some of the issues that you want to avoid, especially if you're going to have special guests on board and you want to record. And that's where Riverside really stands out. Your recordings will end up being smooth and freeze-free. How they do this is they're able to record your recordings to your local hard drive on your end and also your guests. So then when it comes time to edit your video and put it all together, it'll take that local version as opposed to the live streaming version so ending up with a studio quality version and by the way even if you have no plans or desire to launch your own podcast doing interviews and meetings you as a content creator perhaps you're a solopreneur working for yourself or a course creator you can use Riverside to create those video modules for your online course if you're a content creator you can use Riverside to record high quality videos and then post it up on video sharing sites such as YouTube. And the best part I see with Riverside is that it's an all-in-one studio where you don't need to install any piece of software. Everything's built in to their system online. Before we begin, let's talk about pricing and plans. When you sign up, you can start recording 60 minutes for free. And if you exceed that or require more and need the extra features, you can consider one of their plans. On the basic plan, you can record up to two hours per month, while the pro plan, you can record up to 15 hours per month. So you need to know yourself, you know, how many hours you need, you know, how long are your actual podcast interviews and meetings. The extra features otherwise with the standard and pro include things like live streaming, accepting live call-ins, and with the pro specifically includes transcription. So transcribes it automatically. All right, with that said, let me show you how to record your first video show or podcast. After you signed up and logged in, go to studios and create your first studio. A studio is as the name suggests, it's where you can start recording and house all your recordings and even edit your recordings there too. Start by entering your studio title. I've just named mine, my demo studio. Recording type, choose audio and video or audio only. Most cases it'll be audio and video. And then now I'll go to enter studio now. Here we're going to set up our equipment and it says let's check your camera and mic. On the right you will see the configuration. So for the mic, select your microphone. So plug it in or if you're using a built-in one, which I don't recommend, select it from the bottom right here. I'll choose mine, which is the Scarlett Solar USB, the USB interface that connects with my Rode Procaster right here. Next, select your camera. In my case, I've got my iMac right here. I'm just going to use the built-in one, which is a FaceTime HD camera. Otherwise, if you're using, let's say, a webcam, it should appear here once you've connected it. Next, select your Apple. This is where the sound comes out of. Do you want it to be through your headphones, earphones, or your built-in speaker? Highly recommend that you use like a pair of headphones or earphones so that you can listen in on guests and so there's no feedback. But there is a setting right here where you can actually select I'm not using headphones or I'm using headphones. So it'll optimize the output based on your selection there. But in my case, I'll just use external headphones, which is right here, the built-in one. And because I'm using my headphones, I'll choose I'm using headphones. And now I can click on join studio. Next up, what you'll see is the main Riverside recording interface. The first thing you may notice is the invite people section. This is the specific link that you share to your guests so that they can join in on your meeting. And you simply copy the link, email it over to them, or you can invite them by email. That'll send a message to them with the share link right here. On the left, you will see the webcam in action. So I'm looking at the FaceTime uh, camera built into my iMac. If you wanna change your equipment and configuration, you can always go down to the bottom, go to mic, camera or speaker and configure it as you want. You can also go to settings and configure it from here where it says audio and video. From here, you can see a couple of other advanced options such as echo cancellation. So recommended when you're not using headphones. So you can enable that if you are using your speakers as the output. You can also mirror your video. So depending on which way you want it, sometimes the mirror version is quite 
awkward or weird. Under general, what you can do is name your studio, change a studio type, whether it's private or public. In recording, there are some advanced settings such as the recording quality. One thing to note with the recording quality, even though there is an option for 4K, it might not be able to record at 4K. It all depends on your camera's capability. So although you can select 4K, what you'll end up getting is a 1080p uh, recording or a 720p, whatever the maximum resolution your camera is capable of handling. Most webcams are capable of recording at 1080p, but if you know that your webcam can record in 4K, simply enable 4K. There's an option to record separate tracks for internet recordings, uh, but one caveat is that it's a lower quality than local recordings. Below that are some audio settings. You can change the audio sample rate. If you want the highest quality, you can select 48 kilohertz. There's also an option for noise suppression. So if you've got things like your AC, air conditioner, or fan on the background, you can enable that and that will kind of suppress all that background noise. There are some live streaming options if you are a live streamer, but I won't be covering it in this video. But those are some settings you may want to tweak and play around with. Now, a couple of other things to cover before we hit that record button. You've got a media tab, which includes sound effects and media. So when you're actually doing an interview recording, you can play things like a drum roll sound effects. You've also got clapping or you can simply upload your own media files. The next tab is a chat window where you can start typing to guests and producers and anyone else in that meeting. So I'll just type hello and that's what it looks like. The next step before we record, of course, is to invite our guests. You can either copy the link or again, invite them by email. Once you have all your guests on board, you can start recording. The great thing about Riverside is that your guests don't actually have to be on their desktop or laptop. Riverside's got an app for iOS, so that's all they need to do. Open it up, get your link, and then join in. All right, so let's go ahead and start recording, and I'll show you some of the functionalities and how it all works. Once you're ready to record, simply hit the record button. It's got a timer, five, four, three, two, and one. Now it is recording. A couple of things I wanna point out first is this section at the top bar. It's an indicator showing that it is recording. So your audio and video are being recorded on your computer. Guests will also see this on their end, so it'll be stored on their computer. And it says, look for the recording button on people's portraits to verify they are recording too. I don't have any guests here, so I can't demonstrate and show you what it looks like, but if guests are recording, you'll see that indicator with that red little recording icon. On the right, you'll see uploading. What it's actually doing is taking your local recording version and then uploading it continuously in real time to Riverside's cloud server. On the right, you'll see the recording overview and who is actually here and talking. You'll see more options if you click the little down arrow. It's recording at 1080p and it's uploaded this amount of data and it says what platform they're actually recording from. In this case, it's a web platform. At the bottom, you will see some control options such as stopping the recording, your equipment configuration, sharing your screen, and Mark Clip. Mark Clip is enabled as soon as you hit that record button. But what is Mark Clip? Well, let's say you're interviewing a guest and they say something that you want to feature later on and then let's say you wanna snip that little bit of a video of what they said. Let's say it's a quote that they mentioned that you wanna then share on TikTok, on IG Reels, let's say. You can simply mark the clip and let's say I wanna mark it from now. Now it is marked and time stamped at four minutes and 27 seconds. But you will see later once we start editing where that clip ends up being. I'll do a couple of other marking of the clips right here, and let's do another one uh, now. To share your screen or window, you click on share. You can choose either your entire screen, a specific window, or a specific Chrome tab. I'm going to select Chrome tab and choose the Google Chrome tab. And this is a preview of it. Let's go ahead and click share. And now it is sharing this tab right here, this specific tab to my audience and guests. If I wanna stop sharing and switch back to my talking head video or angle, simply go back to the Riverside interface and I'll go back to share and that's disabled it. Okay, let's say we are done with our recording. All you need to do is to click on stop. 
and it says, please keep this page open. And the reason why is because it is still uploading. You will see that it's at 99%. And when it is done, you will see upload complete and it's indicating you can close this page now. So I'll click on leave and meeting for all. It's now taken me back to my demo studio. What you may notice, uh, all these clips, it's organized into different sections. The first is always your full recording. At the top, you'll see yourself and any guests who were actually in that meeting and the status of whether their video or their recordings have been fully uploaded or not. You'll see if you hover over, my tracks and recordings have been fully uploaded. If you simply want to download all your tracks, click on download tracks. At the very bottom, you will see the separated tracks. You've got myself right here and also the actual screen share. So they are two different tracks. You download it as an MP4 if you want the video. So download each one. There's also an audio uh, version in waveform. But let's go back up because I wanna show you clips. And this is where we went ahead, remember, to mark those sections where we wanted. I marked three specifically, and here they are. You'll see the marker at 447, 443, and 427. We can go into each individual one, and from here we can adjust that uh, marker if we want to, and then export it as is. On the right, you will see some options such as the tracks, which one do you want to enable? Do you want to enable uh, yourself here, your guests and your screen shares? Below that, you will see your layout, whether you want the layout to be in a grid style or a grid with gaps, full frame, shared and splitted. You've also got the background. You can change the background, let's say to this one right here or let's say this one. So there are a couple of customization options there. You can also click the plus icon, adding your logo. To edit your clip, let's say you want to go back a couple of seconds, you can simply drag using your mouse, let's say somewhere around there, and ending somewhere around here. You can adjust it really easy, just like that. And when you're ready to download and export it, you can click on export. Choose a video quality. You can also normalize audio levels. Let's say your microphone or the recording was quite low. You can click normalize audio levels. Removing background noises if you want to do so as well. Once that's done, click on export. It's now preparing the clip and you can continue editing the next one if you want to do so. Your next clip will be below, so you'll see it right here. Otherwise, you can create a new clip by clicking plus. But let's go back. Bear in mind, there are a couple of options when you're downloading your tracks. You've got MP4, which is simply the one from your local hard drive or other guests as well. With constant frame rate, it is locked in at 24 frames per second. So if you are going to put together all the different tracks from uh, different guests into your video editor, it'll all stay in sync. Now, if you wanna schedule your meeting or your podcast interview ahead of time, you can go back to your studios, go to the relevant studio, and then you'll see this little gear icon. This is the settings of that specific studio. If you look, down below where it says schedule and invite guests, there's an option to schedule. So click that once, select a date, a time and time zone, and then submit. Now that you've edited and exported your recording, all that's left to do is to upload it to the relevant video sharing website. If you plan on further editing your recording, all you need to do is download the relevant tracks or the full video, and then import it to your favorite video editor, whether that's Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, or my suggestion is to use Canva if you don't have any of those video editors. I hope this video has been helpful in creating your first video podcast interview or meeting. If you found it helpful, do let me know by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new or haven't subscribed yet, and looking forward to sharing the next tutorial with you. Thanks so much for watching.